Hello everybody, my name is Aceface. Welcome to my tutorial series, part two, where we do the career agents. So part one, if you've not seen it and you're a complete beginner to EVE Online, watch part one first because it gives you a bit of uh, understanding how to play the game. Part two is going to be about the career agents, which are basically mini quests, which give you insights into the different activities you can do in EVE Online. In EVE Online, there's so many things you can do, just so many things you can do. And honestly, I can't cover all of the things you can do in a single video. The thing is though, all activities have some very many similarities and if you understand these similarities you shouldn't have much problem doing any of the other activities. Okay let's start off with the military career path because this is a very common activity you do in EVE Online. Combat, so cash flow for capsuleers. Accept this and we get some Gatling rails if we complete the mission as a reward. Okay, let's get started here. Accept it and we're going to go to Uitra. So the missions in EVE Online work is that you like, you have an objective. So in this case, we have to clear these pirates in an asteroid belt. And it tells me that the location is in Uitra. So we'll see here when we undock, there'll be a, a notification here, which we warp to this location. This military career path right here in EVE Online, this like career agent, it's for uh, PV, it's focused on PVE activity. So the other one, advanced military, is going to focus a bit more on PVP. But this one one, however, is going to be focusing a bit on PVE. PVE is player versus environment. You are going to fight NPCs. Fighting NPCs often involves you uh, killing the uh, them, and then you get money in some way or another. So different ways you can get money is you can get like loot from the enemies. You can be finish a mission and you get paid that way. And also you can see that sometimes got bounties here. So for example, in the case of a mission, we're doing a mission right now. This is a career agent mission. We can do here. That we've actually done the mission objective it says that so then we can actually just dock here you didn't actually have to kill every single one because it said here that this tick mark here means that the uh, the objective of the mission is done well in EVE Online there's so many other kind of PvE activities a good way to find different PvE activities is actually to go here in the agency so if you go in agents and missions you can find missions here you can also find exploration you can look at this combat anomalies can find these anomalies uh, uh, in the overview if you go into probe scanner open this up right here and then click on open and separate window on this thing here so you get this probe scanner this is also something good to have I'd recommend you have this up and you can actually sort by name so you have this here and often you'll see these green things they're called anomalies and often in a uh, in a system you'll find anomalies with a pirate name on it so it'll be like maybe like barista something or Sancha something or something like that and you go there and fight enemies that's another way you can do PvE you can get loot from those get bounties so let's undock and do this another mission we just have to eliminate pirates and rescue some civilian uh, miner who's holding he's being held as a captive here then there's also something called abyssal dead space uh, abyssal dead space is a uh, like a special dimension which you can go to and fight people there and then there's like these loot caches which you can raid it's very fun very rewarding we see that if we finish this mission we get a merlin this is a kaldari frigate it's a, one of the, it's a very typical frigate that people newbies will use so it's a decent let's go here and a tip for your overview just to have things out in all the places i have this thing called people and places here this is a, a good tab to have because you can make bookmarks. Bookmarks is like a, just to remember a location. So for example, this station, we could actually just click on plus here and save location, or we could right click, save location. And then we just put maybe, I don't know, we can just say career agent home. There we go, now we've got this uh, station marked. So we'll, we can remember it. If we go to some other place, we can just right click, set destination, and we'll remember it. And that's why I like to keep these people of places tab, tab open right here. Here's a good example of this abyssal dead space thing I was talking about. You activate like a filament and then your ship goes into these rooms. Then you will uh, go into these rooms and then get loot after you've killed every single person in these ones. Then you go back to the original location where you activated the filament. It's, uh, it's an interesting activity, very rewarding. Let's keep shooting these guys. Very simple mission right here. Now I'll just start shooting when I'm in range. You can see that my range is 2.1 kilometers. There's no point with me starting to shoot right here. I'll just waste ammo. Okay, now I'm going to start shooting since I'm getting a bit closer. I'll keep it at range 2.5 kilometers just to apply max damage. I could even keep it at range even closer to apply even more damage. 
Okay, there we go. Now we have to bring civilians. Okay, so it seems like when you've killed every single one of these enemies, then you get the civilians in your cargo hold. So let's just dock back here. They just transfer directly to your cargo hold. You don't need to pick anything up. Let's go here. Warp to this location. Oh, an asteroid is in the way. This is something just to, when you're warping, if something is in the way, you have to, to be able to warp, you need to get 75% speed. So if you're getting blocked by an asteroid, you obviously won't be able to get there. And that's why you saw I didn't warp there straight away. So I had to, it made me go to the side. If you are getting blocked by something and you and it's not warping straight away, like after like maybe 10 seconds, what I recommend is you just click stop and then manually pilot by double clicking and then you get like a free path to the location you want to warp to. Dock here, start conversation, complete the mission, and there we go. We've got some isk as well, so that's very nice. We can use that to buy some, maybe a skill book or something. And now we get a Merlin. Double click it to assemble it, ships. When you get them, they're packaged, and modules in general, when you buy them, they're packaged. The only way you can trade an item is if it's, like, packaged. Uh, then it doesn't, it just says Merlin 1. Now that I double-clicked it, it's, like, named after my name. Now if I double-click it again, I'll uh, enter it, you can see here. If I go in the fitting tab, you can see that there's uh, nothing uh, in here. Now we're going to actually go a little bit over fitting. Because fitting is something that I briefly mentioned before with the high slots, mid slots and low slots. But we're now going to go a little bit in depth to fit this ship just so we can continue to do our missions. Because it's a very good thing to have just a little bit more understanding about fitting. Okay, so to fit this ship here, this is a Merlin. So the way to know how to get a little bit of an understanding how to fit the ship is to click on show info. You can look into traits here and you can see here it says it says a bonus to small hybrid turret damage and bonus to all shield resistances here. Now this tells me here that this is going to be a ship that's good for s small hybrid turrets because uh, we get bonuses from there. All ships have inherent bonuses to certain uh, stats. So, for example, if I were to put um, auto cannons on here or laser beams on here, they won't get the bonuses that this ship hull is providing. This ship hull, the Merlin hull, gives 5% bonus to small hybrid turret. The for each Kaldari frigate level I have. So because of that, we're gonna go and buy some small hybrid turrets. If we go in here, ship equipment, turrets and launchers, hybrid turrets, because we wanna use a hybrid turret, and we can either use a blaster or railgun. Most weaponry comes in two uh, types. So there's one long range weaponry, one short range weaponry. We'll go with the short range weaponry because the short range weaponry usually does the more damage. And I, in this case, uh, we just want to have as much damage as more possible to complete the missions very quickly. However, the, the rail guns will have a longer range, but we'll go with the blasters for the, in the meantime. This is the short range. Weapon. We'll go with small because the way weapons work is that frigates and destroyers use small weapons cruisers and battle cruisers use medium weapons and battleships and some battle cruisers use larger weapons the extra large are used on capital ships since we're in a frigate we'll use small weapons let's see now so we can see that they've got some light electron blasters we want to look for something quite cheap that's in stock so if we look for something that's in stock here we can go for those light electron blasters just see what is in stock. You can actually sort by station to look what is in the station right here. So it seems like light electron blasters, light ion blasters. Uh, the electron do a little bit less damage than the ion ones, but just forget about that for now. That's something you can take later. So we can get these light electron ones since they're very cheap. Let's get two, uh, two of these. And then we'll get another one because we've got three high slots. You can see here three turret slots. You can put three turrets right here. So we'll actually get a third one since you want to utilize our... Uh, maximize the amount of damage we do so we go in here equip these and you can see here we've got this antimatter charge s for that mission we did weapons use ammo and you can see what time of ammo this weapon uses by going on hardware charges and then click on the weapon you've got equipped so you can see here this uses all these types of s ammos this uses s ammos so we've got we've actually got some antimatter charge s here or we can just equip them and we'll put click, click group here to group them all into one place. And we're doing 50 DPS right here. That's quite a bit more than our Corvette that had like 11, I think. So five times more. Okay, now we come to the mid slots. The mid slots, you can fit, since since we went on, if we go back to, just exit this here. If we go to show info and we see that we had, so small hybrid turrets, we get that as a bonus. We also get bonus to shield resistances. So that means we'll ideally want as the defensive capabilities. You can remember before I said you can do armor tank or shield tank. 
In this case, we're going to go shield tank because we get these bonuses to shield resistances. And you can also tell that it's got a very big shield pool. So this is very likely to be able to be a sh very good shield tank ship. So we'll go here. But uh, also remember I said that a propulsion module can be fitted in the mid slots as well. So actually, first I want to go for a propulsion module. And there are two types of propulsion modules. If we go into here, you see ship equipment, propulsion. Go here. We'll close the turrets one. So there's two proper types of propulsion modules. There's micro jump drives, but we'll go for, those we won't go for now. So there's two types, afterburners, which we used before. You can see here. And then there's micro warp drives. You can see here. How it works is that there are ones for frigates, or destroyers, and then there's one for cruisers and battle cruisers, and there's one for battleships. The 1MN afterburner is for frigates, destroyers. 10MN is for cruisers and battle cruisers and the 100 mn is for battleships so you can think of it like small medium and large i would want to use a micro warp drive here the reason is because micro warp drives are uh, quite uh, fast you go really fast the only diff bad side is that they use a lot of capacitor remember before i said capacitor this is where you can see capacitor up here this is like the electricity of your ship so we can see we can just do a little experiment here if we go into look for a cheap one right here Let's look for a cheap, we want to go for 5MN because this, the 5MN is the small one, the 50MN is the medium one, and the 500MN is the large one for like battleships. The 50,000 one is for like capital ships, obviously we don't want to think about that. Let's see now, one a cheap one. These are quite expensive it seems like. There's one, 5MN called gas, we can get this for 37k. Let's buy this one. Okay, we'll equip this now. You see that? Our capacitor went from 5 gigajoules, you see if we turn it off 5 gigajoules, now we have it active, we have 0 0.7 gigajoules, so it takes a big hit to our capacitor. Okay, now we've got a propulsion module, now we want defense, and we said that defense on this Merlin is going to be shield based, because we have, you know, shield resistances right here. And actually, we can actually just go here and uh, go in shields. So if we go here in shields, we see that there's two ways to tank your ships. Uh, apart like as a shield tank or an armor tank so you can either be active tank which means that you have like uh, a booster this boosts your shields you, this is a module which you activate it and it gives you a shield boost now if you have or a buffer tank as you can also say it's basically you put these shield extenders on and they make your total hp very large but it doesn't make your recharge per second so high so if you want a high recharge per second we're going to go with the boosters the uh, shield extenders also give a slight amount of recharge since you're making your whole shield bigger it, you see that your shield recharges to 2 hp per second so if we add some shield extenders to enlarge the shield it'll make it recharge slightly bigger but the most amount of boosting per second will be achieved through a booster but i want to do a uh, passive shield tank well or a buffer shield tank because uh, that it doesn't have so much capacity you should these seal boosters will use so much capacitor so i don't want to use that let's look for a cheap shield extender we can use we're going to go with the small ones because we're going to frigate let's get um let's get one over here and we'll get i think we'll get two more here let's equip these there we go equip all those now the low slots low slots can have uh, often have damage modules or armor tank modules and armor tanks work the same way you can have a buffer tank or, like, by putting like uh, armor plates or you can have an armor repair which will be like uh, repair your armor per second the same way a shield booster will give a shield boost every second okay so we but in the low slots you can have armor but you can also have uh, damage modules and that's the main thing because our main defense is through shields we're not going to think about armor so we'll want to have some damage modules here and hybrid turrets are one of the weapon systems in eve modules that amplify hybrid turrets are magnetic field stabilizers so if we go here magnetic field stabilizer if we go here we look here look for some magnetic field stabilizers that are cheap we can go and give up buy these ones we can buy three of these because we've got three low slots so go buy these and we don't have enough money for that. Let's see now how much money do we have. Okay, we can't even buy one. So maybe we will buy it later, but we can't buy it now at least. So uh, it's okay. We've got a decent amount of DPS here. Now we've got rig slots. Rigs can be used to modify certain stats of ships. So you can, for example, use rigs to uh, increase damage. So if we go here in collision accelerator, if we go into small, you have to use small rigs on small ships. So like a frigate, you'll use. On a frigate, you'll use a small rig, so you've got a small hybrid collision accelerator. You can see it increases our DPS. 
and equipped, equipped 59 DPS. We can also use rigs to increase our shield capacity. So if we go here, field extender, small core defense field extender, you can see here, we've got 2.8K EHP. If we turn it off, we have 2.6K. See that? So they can be used, rigs can be used to modify various stats of your ship. Rig slots are modifications that can't be unequipped from your ship without them getting destroyed. So for example, if I were to have a rig, I could equip it, but then it, if I unequip it, then I'll destroy it. So you can think of it as like kind of like a mod, mod to your ship. While a, mod, a module like this can be unequipped and re-equipped whenever you want, a rig can't be unequipped. So these are quite expensive, relatively speaking. So there's no point of us going for rigs now, but later down the line, you definitely want to have rigs. They're a very common thing to, oh, it's basically, it's really weird if you don't have a don't have a rig, but when you're starting out fresh like I am, or like we are right now, then uh, we'll just go without rigs, rigless ships. Okay, there we go. Now we're going to start the next mission. So we have to destroy some pirates, loot the documents, and report back to the agent. So it's a very simple mission. Warp to the location. Okay, so we've got a bunch of ships here, so we're gonna go just go and kill them. We've got these web drones that are gonna web me. Webifying is a thing that makes it so that we go slower. They are called web drones, they'll make us web a bit. You can also equip a webify that you can make people be slowed as well. It looks very much like this. So look here how fast we're going with the MWD, but now that, or the micro warp drive. I call M micro warp drives MWDs. Keep here, range at 5 or oh, 1000. Start shooting. You see that? Look how fast we kill that guy. Look how much better this Merlin is than that Corvette we were using before. We're just gonna approach this this antimatter charge has a very short range, so we're just gonna approach these. Okay, now these Weber drones, we're gonna try killing them because they're making us go very slowly. Approach this guy. Approach the Weber drone. Activate our MWD to just get a bit faster because he's Weber flying us very hard. You can see we're going a bit faster now. Shoot him there. And he'll die very quickly. There we go. So look how fast we're going now. Almost two thousand meters a second. Really good. Look, he is dying so quickly. Poof. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Okay, so now we've killed a few of these guys. We've got these documents in our cargo hold. We're going to dock back up into the uh, the station. Talk to the agent. Complete mission. We got some more light electron blasters. And we've got some nice ISK, actually. Now we can buy those magnetic field stabilizers I was talking about before. So we can buy... I think we can buy two, maybe? No, no, no. Not nine. Two. No, actually, we can only buy one. Bye. And equip this to our ship. Go in the fitting. Look here, 58 DPS with it on, 50 DPS with it on. So we get a boost to our DPS. So it's very good to have this magnetic field stabilizer. Request a new mission. Accept. The goal is to just warp to a location and approach it. So I need to approach this smuggler gate. Activate MWD to go faster. Simple as that. I have to dock in the station you've finished the mission just by approaching it we're taking a bit of damage from this da gas cloud over here dockly dock dock talk to the asian complete the mission and we can buy another magnetic field stabilizer fit to active ship let's see how much dps we do now 66 dps Oof, we're going to do quite a bit of dps and something actually i want to buy here is a webify now because a webify makes it so that we are able to make people go really slow like that as drone was so we're going to make other people go slow so what i'm going to do here is de-equip one of my shield extenders and put webify here webify is and just webify is considered to be something called e-war e-war is just like stuff that can modify other ships like there's something that can make other people's weapons have less optimal range webify makes other people slower etc there's a lot of debuffs that can do and those usually go in the mid slots request mission now so now we're going to meet some pirate at a repair outpost. Let's just accept this and we'll get a kinetic shield hardener as a reward. Kinetic shield hardener is something that makes us have better resistances. So there's four resistances in EVE Online. There's one called EM, there's a one called thermal, there's one called kinetic, and then there's one called explosive. And the damage type you do it dictates how much damage you actually apply. So we're doing kinetic and thermal damage as you can see right here. So if I were to have 50% EM resist and I'm taking damage from someone who's doing EM damage, then 50% of their damage will be negated. If I have 75% EM resist, someone hitting me with uh, uh, EM damage, then they'll be doing 25% of their EM resist. If I, if I have 90% uh, uh, EM resist and someone is attacking me with EM damage, then I will have, then they'll effectively be doing just 10% of their original damage. So that's how resistances work. This module we will get from this mission will give us, if we equip it, we'll get a bonus to our kinetic shield resistance. 
now we have to meet up with this pirate right here so if we just approach him i think this is all we have to do now we have to actually kill him it says you need to destroy all enemies in the vicinity we can actually move this web fire up here so it's just right next to our gun okay let's dock now because we don't need to kill him it seems like talk to the mission agent complete mission okay so now we've got this uh, kinetic shield hardener and i'm just gonna use this instead of the shield extender uh, somet sometimes depending on your fit it can sometimes be more efficient to use extenders because this extender gives us a boost to our shield hp but this also gives us a boost to our resistance so if i just click on simulate fit this is this is simulating as if i activated this module and you can see here 62 percent of the kinetic resistance there right there well if we don't have active or as if we didn't have it on at all we have only 48 percent resistance but since we were replaced it with this shield extender we have a less large shield hp pool you can see here we have 1.4k now with the equipment we only have 900 we're just going to keep this on for the time being like for example if you're taking a specific damage type like kinetic damage which i'm pretty sure we are going to hear then it could be better to have a, a civilian kinetic shield hardener but if you're going to take all types of damages which often happens actually in player to player combat because you can't really predict what other people are going to have all the time then sometimes it'd be better to have shield extenders let's do the new mission get a implant by doing this mission actually so now we have to destroy an outpost okay now we're going to undock and this implant we actually get is interesting because if you have an implant it makes you actually train skills faster that's how it works and even online you can actually you know how i told you before that you can train uh, skills passively by like here so i'm not training anything now i should be naughty naughty <laughs> so i'm training a, a skill now then uh, this time here, three days and ten hours, it will actually be reduced if I have this implant. So actually, a skill I want to train is actually Kaldari Destroy to a higher level. Actually, no, maybe Light Missile. Light Missiles is good. Because I'll be using that later. So we'll be training then Light Missiles. And then I'll put maybe Kaldari. Kaldari Destroy to level four right there. You're going to see now, if I uh, equip that implant, then it should make it train faster than the, the time it says here. Okay, so now we have to destroy the base that they are talking about. And you can see here there's cluttering all our inventory with these things right here. Let's just remove them from the overview. Need to activate the acceleration gate. Always look here where it says. This is the gate is locked, so we have to kill everyone here. Use our MWD to get very close. Approach, use Webifier. Webifier will make them slower, make it easier to catch them. But there's only a 10 kilometer range in this Webifier, so I have to be slightly closer to be able to uh, catch them. And the reason I'm deactivating my MWD is just not to overshoot too much. You can see here our capacitor is getting quite low, so if our capacitor goes to zero, we won't be able to uh, activate more modules. But it obviously recharges over time. You just turn off the modules that you're using capacitor if you ever run out. So many enemies. So many. There we go. Poof. Acceleration gate. Activate it. Have to destroy this outpost right here. See that? You destroy Tahamara's outpost. Lock it up. Start shooting it. I dock now back at the station. Accept mission, complete mission. Now we've got a limited ocular filter right here. I can plug it in. You can see here now. So we're training our skills a tiny bit faster now. There are implants that cost a lot more than this that actually make stuff train a lot faster. Request new mission. Accept mission. Simple mission. We just have to kill a bunch of people. All right, they're the enemies. Approach. Yeah. Go to work. Make sure you activate your shield hardener right here. Deactivate MWD if you get low on capacitor. Make sure you Webify. This will make it easier for you to hit. There we go. Kill all these scrubs. Now I'm going to dock at the base. We'll talk to the agent. Complete mission. And we see we get some nice isk right there. We're, we're at a million right now. Can even get another magnetic field stabilizer equipped to our ship. Look now, 72 DPS. We're doing quite a bit of damage right here. Now we have to definitely have to get some more ammo. We get some. This is antimatter right here. We can go to to find the ammo. We can actually just go in this charge thing here. I was told you before. So let's look at different ammo types. Let's see if there's any antimatter in stock. So there is some in stock right here. Now I'm wondering if there is any of the other types of ammo. The reason is because these are a bit longer range, so it'll help us hit a bit easier. So you can see here we've got tiny range, 500 meter optimal with this antimatter. Let's see now. What does iron give us? 1.7k lead. What does that give us? 1.1k thorium. What does that give us? 900 meters. Now, so this doesn't really seem to be worth the range. So let's just get some more antimatter. Let's get maybe 1,000. Let's buy it. Actually, let's just buy out all of it because we've got like a lot of money. We're pretty rich right now. <laughs> Quote on quote rich. Put this in here. Re reload some of our ammo. Exit simulating mode. Because that's just to 
test things without actually having them. You can just reload, just drag it into here. You just reload like that. Close all these. Request mission, accept. So now I have to rescue some VIPs. Something you can do is to hide all these modules that are just visible that you don't like, because you can't activate these modules here, like the magnetic field stables all that, and all that kind of stuff. So you can just say, display passive modules. If you go into the little three line thing or four line thing here, just untick display passive modules. Now you just see everything that you can actually click. Like you can activate this, you can activate the MWT. Now we approach the hotel, Kim. I think the VIPs are maybe in here. Stop here, we don't want to over. We'll take a lot of damage right there. You see that? Oof. Complete mission, that's all we had to do. We don't need to do anything else. There's enemies here, obviously, but we can just go back to our mission agent. And also, if you do take damage, like I'm taking, I'm hardly taking any shield damage and it just automatically repairs whenever you dock your shields. But if you take armor damage or even structure damage, you can just go into this repair shop, click on your ship. So this is then my Merlin. This is the ship I'm using right now. And I'll click on repair, but it says here that I can't because I'm 0% damaged. I can talk to this guy here, complete the mission. Request a new one, 9 out of 10, almost done with the military career path. Accept this. Destroy a narcotics warehouse, that's what we have to do now. So now we have to go through this acceleration gate, but it says, it's probably going to say that I need to destroy every single enemy in the vicinity to be able to activate the acceleration gate like before. Let's just lock these up just in case. These guys here. Deactivate IMWD, we don't need to have it all the time, it uses a lot of capacitor to keep it running. Can I use it? Okay, so I can activate it. So you can always test an acceleration gate. Sometimes acceleration gates are locked like before where I had to kill every enemy in the vicinity. In this case, I don't need to do it. There we go, the narcotics warehouse. So a way you can actually just see here, if you're not got any, uh, of, you can't see on the overview, you can actually just uh, click on this and add large collidable object to overview. Then you see here, narcotics warehouse. There we go, now we approach it. MWD on, lock up. Can also click on track to keep an eye on it like that and now we can see it we just get in range of our blasters deactivate and stop our ship because we don't want to just be flying all over the place this is a stationary target so we don't need to be moving we just approach it now and start shooting there we go destroy the narcotics warehouse and we're going to go back to complete our mission now there's only one more career agent mission for the military career path Okay, complete the mission, request a new one, and look, we get another Merlin from doing this mission. Okay, accept it. Now we have to go to this place in Turiainas. It's a system that's not right uh, close to us, it's a few jumps away. Let's go there. Can we set destination if you just see the name? And then we go to the Stargate that's marked yellow. So basically this mission involves me having to kill this guy called Tahamar. It's like an assassination mission, basically. Now we're in Turiainas, and we're going to warp to location. Acceleration gate, take this. There's another acceleration gate here. Let's see if we can take it. No, it's locked. Now we have to kill these guys right here. Let's go and approach it. Activate our hardener. Lock these guys up. These fools. Gross is rookie. Haha. <laughs> what a scrub. A rookie. Look how he's just dying. Like almost two shots. One shot even. So so easy these guys are. With one shot. There we go, destroy all these guys. Let's go into the acceleration gate. Hmm, seems like so we've got some more enemies here. There's a bunch of goons to get through before we assassinate this uh, this boss we have to kill. <laughs> Let's go get closer to them with the MWD. It's always really nice to have because you just go so fast. We could also use an afterburn, obviously, but you go fast with the MWD. The only problem with the MWD is that obviously, like you can often see, is that I overshoot sometimes. Falling like flies, falling like flies. They just keep coming, they never end, these guys. The Guristas, these are the Guristas. The Guristas are like a kind of rogue pirate faction that originated actually from the Kaldari Navy. Oh, okay, finally, this wave is finished. Activating acceleration gate to... Hopefully this is the last location. Okay, so he thinks that the, the Aurora thinks that this is maybe actually in the Stasis Webify Towers. Let's go here. Let's see if Tahamar is in here. Oh, there's Tahamar. Let's get him, let's get him! There we go, finish the mission. Let's go back to the, uh, the our mission agent and complete this final mission for the military career agent. Talk to agent, complete mission, and we get another Merlin. So we've got two Merlins right here. You can see here, you can switch between them in your ship hangar. This is where all your ships are stored. It's like a garage, as I said before. There we go, military career agents done. Next one will be the advanced military, which is a bit more PVP focused. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to check out the next one. 
And if you did find this helpful or enjoyed it in some way or another, please leave a like and subscribe. I'll catch you guys later.